You're listening to the Leverage Your Incredible Factor podcast with Darnielle Jervie Harmon. If this is your first time joining me for the podcast, here's what I'd like for you to know about me. First and foremost, I am the absolute best at combining spiritual principles with business growth strategy to turn entrepreneurs into multiple six and seven figure CEOs. Second, I don't do hustle and grind. I do spirituality and systems. And you might be wondering, what in the devil is an incredible factor? And if so, I invite you to go all the way back to the very first episode of this podcast. It's aptly titled, Exactly What is the Incredible Factor? There's even a cool worksheet that I want you to do that will help you to find yours. Oh, I will likely say some things that will make you laugh, a few things that could make you cry, and definitely make you question if you are ready to leverage your incredible factor. Remember, I'm a coach, and my job is to tell you what you don't want to hear and show you what you don't want to see, all to help you to become who God created you to be. I'm so excited that you're here. Hello, 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 incredible ones. So excited to welcome you to another episode of the podcast. This episode is powered by the Next Level Everything Tour, which is a taste of Breakthrough in Business Live, Next Level Everything, which will be happening this May. The tour will be visiting Delaware, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta, Georgia this month. So if you are a high achieving entrepreneur or small business owner who is done playing and praying small and you are ready to unlock your next level everything in your life because of your business, then you should join us. Nextleveleverything.me, nextleveleverything.me. Okay. So today, I want to talk to you about something that really irritates me. I mean, if there was ever a thing that makes me want to take my nails and screech them across a chalkboard, it's this. You remember that (laughs) from grade school? Did you ever do that? Were you the person in the class that screeched your nails across the board, making everybody's skin crawl? Well, that's how much what we're going to talk about today irritates me. I mean, if there was ever... I I mean, I can't even even get my words together, right? I I know you can hear that because it frustrates me so much. Now, you guys already know I serve the world as a transformational business coach, and I help my clients cross the six and seven figure mark faster than they ever could on their own. I teach them how to experience leverage and scale in their life because of their business while they're building a business that serves them both financially and spiritually. But this isn't about me, right? This, there's no need for my elevator pitch, if you will. It's about what frustrates me about the marketplace that we operate in today. I get bothered by the notion that it's okay to theorize someone to their next level. Here's what I mean. And to demonstrate, I'm going to use my own industry, coaching, because I think it's only fair that if I'm going to talk about something I don't like, I talk about something that I know, right? So let's say you meet a brand new coach who says that they help people get to the million dollar mark. Now, they're a brand spanking new coach, and they have not made a million dollars in their own business. Now, I remember one time I was online and I saw a person who shall remain, who remain nameless who was doing work, talking about getting people to the million dollar mark. And then the fine print was, I haven't gotten to the million dollar mark. And most of the people that I work with aren't at the million dollar mark, but they aspire to be. I'm like, what? Like, why in the world would that even be within the realm of possibility? Those people, that person is theorizing. And you should not do theory. Don't do theory. I remember when I first started my coaching business. Now, I have an MBA in marketing. You may not have known that. And I progressed from 217 entry-level customer service representative to vice president in the Fortune 500 financial services company where I worked in three years. I know a little something, just so we're clear. And even when I first started my coaching business, I was hesitant to work with people who wanted to be above the six-figure mark. You want to know why? Because inside of my own business, I hadn't done six figures. Yeah, if you count my Mary Kay Cosmetics tenure, having gotten that pink Cadillac twice and built my unit to 500 women and helped five women become offspring sales directors. Yeah, I did six figures. 
but I had never done six figures when I first started Incredible One Enterprises as a business coach. And so for me to say I can help you do six figures in your business just didn't feel right. It was one of those key sweat moments I'm always talking about. Something, 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 something just wasn't right. And so I shied away from it. And so instead, because I hadn't done six figures, for me to say I could get you to six figures, I mean, could I technically? Probably, but it would have been theory because I hadn't walked a mile in the shoes that I was asking my clients to try on. Right? And I just didn't want to do that. It didn't feel good to me to say that I could do something that I hadn't done yet myself because then I wouldn't be in integrity. And I honestly think that it is a big boatload of BS to say that you know how to do something if you haven't personally done it yourself and that you can teach or coach other people to do it. I think that is dangerous and you are playing with someone else's livelihood when you do that. Now, I told you all of 2020, we're about next level everything. The only way we're going to get to the next level is if we start keeping it real with ourselves and we start staying in our lane and we start doing what we know we can do and stop hyperbolizing. You guys all know what a hyperbole is. I'm not trying to insult you, but in case you don't, I love words, right? I have read the dictionary many times. I'm, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. It's fast fun fact. But hyperbole is obvious exaggeration. And I don't think it's a good idea to make a case for your marketing to be an obvious exaggeration. I think that's part of the reason why the coaching industry is so jacked up. <laughs> Unfortunately, coaching, if you didn't know, if you've never had a coach, you aren't a coach and you don't want to be coached, I will say everyone needs a coach at some point in time, but coaching is a deregulated industry. And that means that anybody, anytime, any place can call themselves a coach, throw up a website, put together some marketing copy, create some packages and enroll people into their coaching programs, even though they might not have the skills necessary to pull off what it is that they're saying they're going to do. Now, I do also think that there are some people who erroneously call themselves a coach when they really are a consultant or a strategist. I've definitely done that. I have coaching certifications. I have a life coaching certification from Coach Training Alliance, and I have an executive coaching certification from the, ex the Center for Executive Coaching. Although I will tell you that I don't really consider myself a coach. I think that's what the industry calls me but I really consider myself to be a strategist because I spend very little of my time coaching. I feel like I'm getting off track and I want to get us back onto the point that I came here to make. I think that you should only lead where you've actually gone. There, I said it. Oh, I'm so glad I got that off my chest because it really burns my biscuits. I have a client who says that. I think it's the cutest thing. It really burns my biscuits to see people saying that they can do what they haven't done themselves. Yeah, I mean, technically I could take a business to... 10 figures. I could technically because I know how to do it. And the process is the process. The way you grow a business is the way you grow a business. But when they have intricate things that happen, they have challenges that come up. They need some support around something. If I haven't walked there myself, then I'm going to continue to theorize on something that is very real for them. And so I don't think it's a really good idea. Now, I fully understand that I probably just piss somebody off. Is it okay if I say that? I probably just upset somebody really, really bad because here you are out here as a coach telling people you can get them over the six-figure mark and last year you made $35,000 in your business. And I, I'm not sorry because you shouldn't be doing that. Lead where you have already gone. Don't do theory. Don't theorize. Theorizing gets people in trouble. It gets people in trouble. I think what tends to happen in the marketplace, when we do this, when we try to offer something we haven't done ourselves, is that we jack people up. Now, don't get it wrong. Don't get me twisted. I'm all good for someone having amazing self-esteem. But I also think that that's the very reason why the coaching industry is so jaded. And so many people have experienced coach hurt. Now, that might be an entirely different episode of the podcast. So I'm not going to go down that path with you right now. But we will do an episode on coach hurt because that's very, very real, right? They hired someone, a, a, a coaching client hired someone who was a great marketer who didn't know what in the world they were doing. 
but because they were a great marketer or they copied someone else's copy who is a great marketer, they ended up jacking up somebody because they weren't a great coach, right? I really think that it is, this is something else I think is BS, to say that you've helped other clients do what you haven't done for yourselves. I think there's a disconnect and I see it all the time, all the time. I see people teaching that they can get you to seven figures when they've only done five or maybe they've done six and it needs to stop. If you haven't personally generated the leads, if you have not person, per, I can't even get it, get my words out right. If you have not personally actually done whatever it is you are saying you can teach people, you need to stop. And if you encounter someone, ask for the receipts. Aren't we in a marketplace today where people want receipts? Ask for the receipts. I would happily show people what we've done in my business. Happily. You know what? Because I'm the real deal. I'm the absolute real deal. So let me talk about myself for a quick second. Because again, I don't want to make it about me. I want to make this about theory or the lack thereof so that we can stop getting people to theorize about who they are and have people own. So like, let me, before I even talk about myself, let me go here. So if you are a business coach, as an example, and you have officially and effectively started your business and brought on your first five to 10 clients, teach people that. Only teach what you yourself has done. Because when they get, when they get, um, jacked up in the process. When something doesn't go right, you can't help them course correct. I remember I was working with a client many years ago. I was over the six figure mark at this point, but I hadn't done seven figures yet. And I've constantly increased who I work with and what I do in my business, by the way, based on where I've gone. But I remember I was over the six figure mark, but not over the seven figure mark yet. And I had a client who wanted to get to the six figure mark. And at that particular point in time, I was helping people to grow their business to six figures in a year. And they were doing a strategy that I had given them that I had watched work many, many times for many other clients and something got lost in translation. And because I knew what I was talking about and I wasn't spouting theory, I could literally have them stop. I'm like, okay, let's break it all the way down. Let's go back to the beginning. What was the first thing you did? What was the second thing you did? What was the third thing you did? And can walk through every single step and say, whoa, 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 that's where you messed up. You forgot to do one, two, and three. And because you didn't do one, two, and three, it's going to impact A, B, and C. And because of the impact that it's going to have on A, B, and C, you're going to create seven, eight, and nine problem. Because I had done it. Don't do theory, y'all. No theory. Hashtag no more theory. Let's build businesses in integrity. Let's walk where we've already gone. How about trying that on for size? So now let me talk about me. Me, in case you were wondering. Yes, I have built my company to seven figures. Do you know, I just, before I started recording this episode of the podcast, I did a quick calculation of how much I've closed in sales over the last 10 years. And this is a, this is an estimate. I lowballed it. I probably have actually done more than this, but over the last 10 years in business, I have closed $20 million in sales in my own business. I've spoken at and or hosted more than 2,500 live events, and my largest launch did more than $2 million in less than a week. Am I bragging? Absolutely not. Trust and believe that your girl has had as many failures as she has had successes, right? I've been told no more than you can say leverage your incredible factor. I've been told no so many times that if my head's been around on N- it would be still spinning. I've talked to people who aren't the right client. I literally, again, before I started recording this episode, was having a conversation with someone who was not an ideal client and I had to tell them I'm not the right person for them. I have literally hit every obstacle and heard every objection in selling at least 20, 50, 11 times. I know that's not really a number, but my dad used to say that all the time. 20, 50, 11, right? That many times it has happened. But you know what? I'm better for it because I don't do theory. Now, I'm not teaching getting people to the eight-figure mark. You know why? Because that's not a frontier that we've crossed yet. Again, could I do it technically? Because it takes the same exact energy to do six figures as it does to do seven figures as it does to do eight figures. It's a numbers game. 
but I'm about being in integrity and I, I don't want to do any theory. And I don't want to be talking about anything that I can't back up when a person comes back to me and says, I tried this and it didn't work. I want to be able to retrace the steps and be able to help them to course correct because I know exactly what it is that they need to do. And I will tell you, nothing brings me more joy than to help my clients today leverage and scale their businesses. And I work across a lot of different industries. I do not just work with coaches, in case you were wondering. My clients are service-based business owners. It is important that you have a service-based business because one of the things I want to teach you is premium and high ticket pricing, right? That'll probably be a separate episode of the podcast as well. Premium pricing, just to give you a little taste, is probably anywhere from a thousand to maybe $10,000. And then high ticket is probably, well, mid ticket is probably about 10,000 to about 30,000. And then higher ticket is like $30,000 plus. And there are other people who might say something different. But in my world, that's what I teach. That's what I know. That's what I help people with because I don't do theory. I'm all about making sure that whatever I share with you is something you can actually do. So the moral to the story and what I want you to take away from this particular episode of the podcast is to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Don't be one of those people creating hurt out in the marketplace. Be one of those people instead who operated in integrity, who showed up fully, and who only coached, taught, or led where they've actually already gone. It's going to be hard for you to create a roadmap if you've never been there. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your potential clients. I know your life, your business, your everything will be much better if you don't do theory. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you for joining me for the Leverage Your Incredible Factor Business Podcast. I'd really love to help you grow a business that funds the life you crave while doing work that shakes the planet. Get started today by applying for a discovery session with me or a member of my team at darnielle.com forward slash session. And if you enjoyed our time together, do yourself a favor, head on over to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Until next time, remember, you do deserve a business that funds the life you crave. Take care.